Welcome back to The Charismatic Voice. Like some of you, I just recently discovered Kate Bush, and it's astonishing how many famous artists cite her as one of their number one influences. She released today's song, Wuthering Heights, when she was just 19, and with it, she became the first female artist in the UK to have a self-written number one hit. 45 years later, I'm going to listen to it for the first time. Let's get to it. This is almost batty. It's kind of crazy how she's playing around with different areas of her voice. Uh, even though I have heard her in one song, this is not where I expected to hear her voice at all. The placement of it feels entirely different. She's uh, She almost finds a slightly witchy um, kind of placement. It's thinner in that upper air register. I, I'm gonna go back to the beginning. Very, very unexpected. The little the little sounds and the motions at the beginning almost felt Disney-like. And then when she started in, I thought we had something from Hocus Pocus. This is shocking. It's something I could see becoming hit material because I want to listen to parts of it over and over and over. She's playing with her sound and really gets it narrow and high in a couple of different spots. That's what gives it that witchy sound. But then on moments like I hated you, I think is a moment in there. She brings in a lot more depth into the sound as well. Um, and then, I mean, add to this, the music video, obviously she's playing off the ghost in Wuthering Heights, Catherine the Ghost at this point. Um, and we've got like, it sounds like a, a harpsichord or maybe a, maybe slightly different. There's another one that strikes slightly different. That's not a harpsichord. I'm forgetting the name of it right now. Um, there's... Uh, it's often associated, anyhow, the keyboard sound with something creepy at this point. We also have a piano in there, but there's a sound that's very similar to our harpsichord as well, and that gives us that sort of like haunted thing, in addition to just this obvious mummy side of a stance that she's got going on, white dress, floating, crazy eyes, right, wide open, feels like she's haunting somebody. Uh, I want to go back to the beginning one more time. This is, there's a ton that's going on vocally with her that's really cool. Interesting reflection. At this point, she has a similar vocal tract shape to Moaning Myrtle. If you've ever seen Harry Potter series and you think about Moaning Myrtle in the back in the bathrooms, it's a very similar kind of shape where it's a narrower pharyngeal space, getting it far forward. But at the same time, she still has the height in top, so it's not totally closed off. Um, very 
very creepy. Though on Fallen, she opens up that space a little bit more. So she's playing with her singing call a ton. Whoa, um, this is so progressive in the shift of harmonies and the structure of the phrasing, meaning that we don't have a square phrasing. Um, it has often shifts in where it feels like we're gonna wrap something up and it ends up wrapping a little earlier or a little later than you expect. It's not square like a lot of pop music today is. And the harmony is, is wild, honestly. It's very, very, very progressive. Uh, that surprises me that it became a number one hit because it is so progressive and often things that stretch people's expectations can take a little bit longer to reach that kind of cult appreciation status. <laughs> this is cool. Oh. This is, I, I feel that the interpretive dance with it is incredible, especially the way that she starts using her hips on, on Wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. It's a fun slide. She's also throwing in an extra, it sounds like an extra two, four time signature in there, which is partly why the phrasing gets shifted around so much. Let me count that off. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. Right, random two fours in there. Could be six fours if you add it. Fascinating. She's playing around so much with the sound. I also understand that she recorded this all in one take. That this vocal and the record is all one take. Knowing that, sometimes I'm like, cool, you know, interesting. Uh, maybe a person has sort of something that they've worked on for a long time, they've developed it and they've got something imprinted. But I understand that this process was very fast, the writing, the production, the recording of it. And she's so explorative in her different expressions here. So I think it's fascinating to think that her mind just came up with all of these different ways to express these words, in addition to writing the words as well. Very cool. <laughs> It's surprising how much head voice she uses in here too. And it's not like a nice round, um, voluptuous kind of head voice. It is that thinner head voice. To, and she really is playing into a thinness and that sort of witchy, creepy spot in it. 
I think a lot of people would be concerned that somebody would say, ooh, that's that's not pretty enough or uh, warm enough in the sound. And instead, she just goes for it. It's a very, very unique sound. And then I like I like the way when she drops down lower, she does expand it out a little bit. Uh, it gives you the idea that this voice is capable of a ton of different things. I hear lots of Tori Amos influence. Interpretive dance move for wonderful there. The the uh, work around the head there with the hips, it, it looks pretty wonderful. she plays around with little slides too you can tell she's very precise in her pitch by how she goes oh ho ho and she does little uh, essentially little runs they have a little jump in them too and you can tell she's landing on each of those notes very precisely and she gets off of them very precisely and then she chews it in other places to have a Oh, oh, so you slide into it or slide off of it. And she has both options in various places throughout in this chorus. She's just having fun exploring her voice. One of the things I always am hearing in her voice is this really steady airflow that she is riding. I always like to compare good air for singing to catching a wave. It's like surfing and you catch a wave of air and you just ride that wave of air. I hear her consistently using that air to go between notes. I don't hear it stopping and restarting. It's really just continuous. It's like a big whoosh that is always, always going. She's just directing air here. Wow. <laughs> Does not show you, shy away from that bright E vowel at all. A lot of times if you have an E vowel that's higher like that, people will modify it to be a little more open, a little warmer. So instead of going E, which is very forward, very bright. And if you're on a higher note, can sound a little piercing essentially. So people will maybe round their lips E. We see that a lot in opera because it gives you a rounder tone. Or instead of just E, the a bright forward, they might drop their jaw a little bit, kind of go towards eh, E. That's really overdoing it, but you get the idea. They'll go in that direction slightly to warm that sound up a little bit. But not her. <laughs> she just goes for it. It's really bright, really forward. Oh, okay.
Wow. You really get this idea of a ghost calling to somebody outside of a window, right? It feels, especially with the production here and the way she's coming closer and closer, it feels like she's haunting. And by the way, I read in some prep for this that Kate Bush and Emily Bronte share the same birthday. It was like meant to be. <laughs> Oh, fade out with instrumental? What? That was really cool. I love the progressive nature of this song, and I love how playful she is with her voice to the point of sounding creepy, but being totally willing to take that on within a popular medium. Oh, wow. She is one gutsy lady. I'm not surprised that this is the kind of thing that paved the way for so many artists. Wow. If you would like to see the first time that I ever heard Kate Bush, you can check it out in this video over here. I hope to see you soon and may you fall more in love with music every day.